today while I'm at the Mayo Clinic, I thought I'd take some time and explore their nature trail. I, I found for me to go to healing gardens and, and nature trails, and there are a few throughout Phoenix that I visit, has been real helpful because it's, as I'm going through this and when I'm around people, I, I still feel a need to kind of suck it up, so to speak, and you know, be all pulled together and be in a good mood and, and put forth always the best face. So what I found is if I can get away and find some time for myself in a place like this where there's a sense of peace and solitude, I can just be. I, I don't have to be someone going through cancer. I don't have to be someone experiencing cancer well or poorly. I can just be me. Uh, Mary Ellen, my sister, has handled it far greater and far better than I would have ever expected. When I first heard of the diagnosis about six months ago, um, of course it was a shock. Um, we have no family history that we know of other than a first cousin, so I was having to deal with um, not only realizing that my sister had cancer, but the you know, myriad questions of why. Um, but I would say as a family member to just be there um, for them as much as possible, yet still allow space to be able to deal with, um, again, the emotional component, the physical component of the disease. When I was last with the video team, I was actually in my second round of chemo. And at that point, I still had my hair. And um, in preparing for the chemo, I, I thought losing my hair was going to be probably the most difficult part. But I honestly, it, it didn't turn out that way. What we did is my husband shaved my head for me. He got the trimmers out. And we had music going in the background. And one of the most beautiful songs I've heard we had playing. And it, I cannot tell you the exact words, but I can sure share the message. The song is, I am not my hair. I am not my skin. My soul is within. My hair is not my integrity. And so that was playing as he was taking the trimmers and cutting off the hair. And for that part of it, I, I, was, I was good. I was smiling. But then the next song that came on was Melissa Etheridge's I Run For Life. And I don't know where it came from, but from the very core of me came out these emotions. And you can still see it still is happening now. Something about all the women, the daughters, the mothers, the grandmothers that are going through breast cancer and have to go through chemo and then have to go through the loss of hair and potentially the loss of life got to me and the tears just flowed. And again, it wasn't so much losing my hair, it, it just made it real that this isn't something that's happening out there, it's something happening to me. But. And my poor husband, he was, he was so stoic through all of this. And, and you see, um, we took some, some still pictures just to record the event. You can see his whole demeanor change, that it became real to him too. So that was, that was the hardest part. But once we finished and I saw the picture of my bald head, um, I smiled again. Because the song is right. I'm not my hair. And that's what they make these wonderful wigs for. Losing the hair was not so much of an emotional component for me because I was able to see it gradually. But my daughter, who's out of the country, when she saw her in a picture for the first time without her hair, that was just like a slap in the face that this is cancer, this is real. I mentioned my need for control. I don't think I'm unique in that regard. I think as a mother, that's, that's what we do. We want to manage ourselves. We want to manage our surroundings. We want to ensure um, the best things for our children, for our families. 
I can choose to take care of myself, which for the first time may mean I choose not to be there 150% for my family. I can choose to pay attention to my diet and exercise, and I can choose to be knowledgeable about the things I, I do control. And that was important for me, and I think important for how well I'm doing through this process is the things I can't control, the cancer diagnosis, what treatments have been done, what's out there, why I'm here in the first place, let that go. The things I can control is paying attention, maybe for the first time in my life, to me first. And that's made a big difference. And then ultimately recognizing, we hear it, but believing, taking care of myself is the best thing I can do for my family. Thank you.